Shalom. I'm going to start by giving all the praises, glory, and honor to Yahweh Bashem, Yahushai Bashem, Kakwadash. Del to the elder apostles of the great Muslim who rule well, and as always, peace and salutations to the old elect tabernacle of David, scattered throughout the four corners of the earth. And I want to go into some history, you know, dealing with uh, the Herodian dynasty, you know, because that happens to be, you know, the uh, the topic of the week, the hot topic of the week. And you had that guy, uh, the head of uh, one body in Yahawashai, you know, he made the uh, erroneous statement that uh, Herod, you know, was a wicked Israelite. And when you go into the history, which is, is pretty easy, you know, it's, it's just a Google, a quick Google. You know, you can look it up and look up, you know, uh, Herod's ancestry and who he goes back to. You can see clearly that, you know, that goes back, you know, to the devil himself, <laughs> Esau, Edom. And um, this lesson that I'm going to go into is going to further prove that these Herodians were nothing but chocolate covered Edomites. You know, because, you know, they, um, their forefathers, you know, married into the Hasmoneans, you know, which those were the, the last stock of uh, Jews, you know, that was intended by the, uh, the Hellenists. And, you know, you had John Hyrcanus who forcibly converted, you know, those Idumians. And that's how the Herodian dynasty came about. You know, and they continue to, you know, keep the practice and the customs of the Jews, even though they were Edomites. And the Romans saw fit to actually use them, you know, to have, you know, more uh, political control over Judea. All right. So these Herodians were basically just Edomites that were put in power by Roman Edomites. All right. To be over the the uh the israelites the jews at the time so that that history is is pretty easy you know you could just do a, a simple google search and you could find that out so that guy uh jephthah or he's not really fit to be a a, a real teacher he's not, he's not a real prophet of yahweh bashem yahweh shai all right but anyway you know that that uh, inspired brothers to go into these different lessons and go into the history now in this lesson i'm gonna show you that these these were clearly devils because they were a bunch of degenerates that whole line of herodians you know they were a bunch of uh degenerates man they were a seed of ungodly filled with adultery and incest and that's what i have right here on this uh, on the screen this is uh from uh, early church history.org and it goes into the incestuous the incestuous relationship between agrippa the second and his own sister uh berenice and when when you go into um the Herodian dynasty family tree, um Herod Agrippa uh the second, his father was Herod Agrippa the first, and he came out of um uh Aristobulus, all right, which was the son of Herod the Great. He was one of the sons of Herod the Great. All right. Um so Herod uh, Agrippa the, the the second, he's the the uh, the Herod Agrippa that's recorded in Acts the twenty fifth chapter, when uh, when Apostle Paul was um on trial and he had to basically present himself before the uh, the governor Festus, and you also had King Agrippa that came to see him during the trial and he came with his sister Berenice. Secular history goes into. You know the 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 innings of that relationship between Agrippa the second and his and his sister, and why she was so close to him like that. You know he's bringing his own sister to the trial. You know so obviously there was something going on. So these were a, a, a bunch of degenerates. And before I even get into it, let me get a quick scripture. Let's go to uh, Sirach the sixteenth chapter. Let's go to Sirach sixteen. And uh, one, it says, desire not a multitude of unprofitable children, neither delight in ungodly sons, though they multiply, rejoice not in them, except the fear of the Lord be with them. Trust not thou in their life, 
neither respect their multitude for one that is just is better than a thousand and better is it to die without children than to have them that are ungodly all right and the herodian dynasty <laughs> that, that was a, a line of ungodly demons because they they go back to an ungodly man esau edom uh, when when Apostle Paul described uh, Esau in the Hebrews the twelfth chapter in the sixteenth verse, he referred to him as a a, a a a fornicator and a profane person. You know, a fornicator in the sense of, you know, he 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 he's he's idolatrous, right? But also, uh, physically, you know, he's sexually immoral. You know, there's nothing to this devil to commit all type of uh, sexual perversion, man. He's heavily into uh, uh, adultery, uh, homosexuality, a uh, 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 bestiality. That's part of the nature of, uh, of Edom. That's why it's it's so prominent among his descendants, man. You expect this kind of behavior within these devils, man. But these particular devils, the Herodians, they were portraying to be Israelites. They held that title of uh, of of Hera, which means a hero. You know, because they were converted into our uh, customs, so they were acting like they were uh, righteous, but they were wicked as all hell. You know, but they had power over us, and the Romans set, saw fit to set them, you know, over us. You know, they set their, their sons as kings over Judea to keep the Jews at bay. All right, but when you go into their history, they were, they were wicked as all hell, man. They was putting hell on on uh, on Jake. All right. So anyway, you know, I I just I just want to go into that real quick because, you know, you can read up just on on the history, man. I'm finna go. I'm I'm getting ready to go into uh the 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 history on Agrippa the second and his incestuous relationship with his sister, but also what's recorded in the scriptures is, uh, Herod. Uh, Antipas, he was the one that uh, uh, called for the, the beheading of John the Baptist because he took his brother's uh, wife, Herodias, where she was supposed to be married to Herod Philip I, but he ended up uh, having an affair with his, his wife, you know? And because of that affair, that that led to a series of, of events that had that, that led to John the Baptist being beheaded, man. You know, so these were these were all a, a seed of of devils, man, ungodly men. All right. So anyway, I'm gonna get into the article and then uh, we going go into some scriptures. It says Agrippa Jr. and his sister Berenice were two of the five children born to Agrippa the first and his wife Cyprus. Their father, through an inheritor of Herod's throne, was a wastrel. Who dragged his family all over the Middle East from pillar to post, trying to escape his debtors? The men in, Her in the, Her the Herod dynasty were all descendants from Herod the Great, the Idumean Arab, who was the first Roman appointed king of the Jews in Jerusalem and is famous for trying to kill Yahweh Shai in the slaughter of the innocents. All right, and he was not an Arab in the sense of an uh, Ishmaelite. All right, um, Edom, the land of Edom which the Greeks called Idumia, you know, it happens to be in the uh, Arabian uh, desert. So that's why they refer to them as Arab, but they were not actually Arabs. Right, but there's different types of Arabs. You got uh, uh, Edomite Arabs, you have Ishmaelite Arabs, and you have Jake over there that can also be called Arabs. If you live in that region, they, they'll call you an Arab. All right? So anyway, um, it says uh, Agrippa and Berenice's childhood was filled with instability and they inherited the bad blood seen in all of Herod the Great's descendants. All right, because he's a he's a he's a wicked, you know, he, he goes back to Esau Edom. The scriptures tell you in Malachi, the, uh, the first chapter, the fourth verse, that there will be a border of wickedness. So that's naturally an inherited characteristic to be degenerate, to be wicked. To be immoral. So of course it's going to trickle down to your descendants man. So continuing on it says. 
Agrippa II and Berenice spent years of their childhood and most of their adult life in Rome, where all Roman client kings, like their father Agrippa I, sent their royal children to be educated. Thus, the two siblings, Herod, the great great grandchildren, were Romanized and began incestuous relationship. You know, because Rome, you know, they was all about uh, the uh, sexual immorality, you know, being a bunch of degenerates. That's why when you read Romans, the first chapter, you know, uh, Apostle Paul was addressing the type of behavior that, you know, Jake was, uh, was, was involved in because they had to live up under the matter of the customs of the Romans, that Roman uh, 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 lifestyle, you know. They were all into homosexuality and sexual perversion, man. You know? It says, uh, even though Berenice was politically married off uh, occasionally to several small kingdoms' kings, she had three husbands. The first was, just like the first when she was 13, which shows you also that that was a custom back in the ancient world that, you know, women married uh, younger. You know, after they hit puberty, they, they, they were marrying. All right? It wasn't just uh, the, uh, uh, in, in the Hebrew custom to marry uh, that young back then. The Romans married that young back then. The Egyptians married that young back then. That was just a common thing back then. You know, but things has changed since then and now. All right? It says three marriages all ended. And by age 22, she was single again. So this woman, she... You know, poor, man. But yet... Because they were uh, Herodians, they were being uh, uh, held as, you know, uh, Jewish people, even though they wasn't of the stock of uh, Judah, Yahweh. Uh, that term Idumia came from the Greeks and the Romans. They were being called Idumians. Like when you read Ezekiel, the 36th chapter, where it talks about, um, and all Idumia that took my land for possession. That word Idumia isn't really supposed to be there because back at the time of Ezekiel, um, our land wasn't under the possession of the Edomites back then. All right. And matter of fact, when you actually look up uh, Judea and the Greek, and when you also look up Idumia and the Greek and how they're pronounced, they're very similar. Because those Edomites that were practicing the customs of the Jews, they were being called Idumians, all right, by the, Ro the, the Roman Edomites. All right, now let's go to uh, Judea real quick, just to, you know, just to go into it. And uh, the word for uh, Judea in the Greek is uh, Eudaya, e Eudaya. All right, which goes back to Yahweh, the, all right, uh, the Mosai uh, praise, all right, Judah. Then when you uh, look up Idumia, let's go to Mark 3 and 8 real quick. All right. And you see the word Idumia there, Mark 3 and 8. And uh, let's look up Idumia. And now you notice with Judea, the Greek word is Eadua, Duya, right? And Idumia is Edomaya. So you have Eadua. Let, let, let me go back to it because I want to I want to make sure I pronounce it right. Let's go back to Ju Judea. Just so you can see the correlation. So when you when you read Idumia in the Old Testament, like when you read Ezekiel 36 and 5, you read it in um, Isaiah the 34th chapter and it uses the term. Idumia, that's just an anachronism. Okay? During the time of Ezekiel and the time of uh, uh, Isaiah, you know, we, we didn't speak the Greek language. 
Yep. All right, so Judea is pronounced as Eodia. E Eodia. And Idumia is pronounced Idumia. Okay? So Eadia and Idumia. All right? Because this was they were calling the Edomites that was practicing our customs Idumians. So that's why they got that term from the Greeks and the Romans. Okay? Now, going back to the Herodians, you would think they know better because, you know, they knew the law. Right? Because they learned up under their fathers who was converted, you know, by... Um, Hyrcanus, you know, which they 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 were uh under the line of uh of the priest, the priesthood. So of course they knew the law, but yet <laughs> this 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 uh Edomite whore and this degenerate Agrippa the second, they was messing around having an affair with each other, man. You see, and what does that show? That according to uh. Isaiah the 26th chapter. Let's go to Isaiah 26 and 10. And this proved without a shadow of a doubt that these are clearly Edomites. I don't know what Jephthah was talking about. These are straight up Edomites, man. It's Edomite behavior. Isaiah 26 and 10, it says, Let favor be showed to the wicked, yet will they not learn righteousness. And the rightness he will he deal unjustly and will not behold the majesty of the Lord. You see? And you know, they, they learned the law. Okay? And they held the the, the, the title of kings of, of, of over Judea, but yet they were still being wicked because they will not learn righteousness because they're their father the, the devil. They they they're the stock and offspring of, of Esau Edom. Okay? So no wonder why this behavior was rampant amongst the Herodian dynasty. They were a bunch of degenerates, man. Okay. And also, let me get our Psalms 50 and 16. Yeah, Psalms 50 and 16. And it says, but unto the wicked, what has thou to do with to declare my statutes, or that thou shouldest take my covenant in thy mouth, seeing thou hatest instruction and cast of my words behind thee. And they knew the law, so if they knew the law, then I'm pretty sure they knew that having an incestuous relationship is unlawful. That's 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 abominable. You know, you go you can go to Leviticus the eighteenth chapter, and it tells it it tells it in our law that you know you're not supposed to uh, marry somebody that's uh, uh, close kin to you, man. You're not supposed to deal with your sister. You're not supposed to deal with your mother. You're not supposed to deal with your 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 auntie, your uncle. You know. That's that's off. But let favor be showed to to the wicked. They will not learn righteousness, man. So this is part of that history to let you know how how they was moving. They clearly. Of the stock of Esau, man. These are straight up Edomites, degenerate. Man. So I'm gonna read uh, the rest of this right here, and then um, I'm gonna close out. This is, uh, it says, Berenice and Agrippa lived together in Rome, and soon it was rumored they were incestuous. Not much shocked the Romans, but this was prohibited in all the laws of the ancient world. One could marry a close relative, like an uncle, aunt, or first cousin, but never a brother or a sister. Salakia. It says that was anathema, Salakia anathema, which in the Latin is a, a cursed thing. Agrippa's contemporary Roman juvenile, uh, uh, circa 55 to 130 AD, in his satire 6, made open fun of Agrippa in a Berenice and of Jewish custom. A diamond of great renown made precious by the finger of Berenice that was given as a present by the barbarian Agrippa to his in the country Judea where kings celebrate festal Sabbaths with bare feet and where a long-established clemency suffer 
suffers pigs to attain old age. You know, so they became uh, infamy, man. You know, because they were a bunch, they were clearly uh, degenerates. It says, in order to escape this rumor truth, Berenice contracted her third marriage, circa 50 A.D. with uh, Polyme, king of Cilicia in modern Turkey. You know, so not only was she uh, having an incestuous affair with, you know, her 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 own brother, but she was constantly marrying men. And we know, according to uh, the law, you know, a woman is not supposed to, uh, you know, marry another man while her her uh, husband is alive, or she's seen as an adulteress. But you think they care? No, because they're they're the devil, just like the the devils that are occupying our land today. They're a bunch of devils. That's why they got the uh, uh, the biggest, uh, 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 you know, rainbow mafia parade that they throw every year. They outdo the rest of the world when it comes to that, man. You know? So clearly these people ain't right. All right, now, um, I'll read this part too, and then we're going to hit a couple more precepts, and I'm going to close out. It says, Ptolemy did not want the marriage, but was persuaded by a great deal of money. Showing you that, you know, marriages back then were more so, uh, you know, economic transactions, as well as, you know, they were marrying for you know, uh, uh, political reasons as well. You know, they want to, you know, maintain certain, you know, power and posture in certain, you know, regions, you know. So, you know, marriage wasn't just seen as just, you know, a man and a woman getting together and, and you know, tying a knot, so to speak. You know, it was all for, um, you know, political and economic reasons and also for power. So it says, when a report went, that she had criminal conversation with her brother Agrippa persuaded uh, Ptolemy, who was king of Cilicia, to be circumcised and to marry her, as supposing that by this means she should prove those calumnies upon her to be false. And Ptolemy was prevailed upon, and that chiefly on account of her riches. Yet did not this matrimony endure long, but Berenice left Ptolemy and was said with lynch licentious intentions josephus of the antiquities she sent back to her brother agrippa as berenice and agrippa were living their roman like lives in the in the early 50s a.d the christian movement was spouting or sprouting right under their noses while berenice was in cilicia paul's home area uh the the polemy king of cilicia they never met that would be later, about 10 years later, Emperor Claudius had brought up Ray's Agrippa when he had sent as a young boy to Rome to be educated, gave his friend whom I brought up and, ha and have now with me the kingdom of Jerusalem in 54 AD, according to Jose Josephus Antiquities. It's like your Antiquities, all right? So this history, you know, this, uh, this is the secular history of what was going on but you can see that even tied into our biblical history that there was accounts of uh, uh agrippa the second you know coming to the trial of paul with his sister uh berenice and that's in uh, acts the 25th chapter man so obviously you know like i said these were a seed of a bunch of degenerates man and and what this proves also is that you know the most high you know he can he can raise up you know a a a a a, a nation of base people you know <laughs> you know straight up beast like man but he can he can raise them up to 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 power as I get Daniel's 4 and 17 yeah Daniel 4 and 17 it says this matter is by the decree of the watchers and a demand by the word of the holy ones to the intent that the living may know that the most high ruleth in the kingdom of men and give up it to whomsoever he will and set up over it the bases of men. And just by this history alone, you could you see that these motherfuckers were base as hell, man. Very low. You know? They were bottom of the barrel, but yet the Lord had them in power over us. That you even had Apostle Paul that had to basically, you know, uh, a flattered this 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 demon man 
when he when he was appealing to Caesar and he had to basically, you know, appeal. He had his hearing before uh, King Agrippa and and Festus the governor, and Agrippa was a damn incestuous degenerate. But yet he had the power to to you know uh, get in the uh, um, ear of of the Caesar to actually help Paul you know get off you know uh, his charges, man. So he basically had to plead and and, and speak flattery. You know, to a, a a damn degenerate man, and you have the that devil uh, vocab Haman. He kept on bringing up how you know Paul was basically saying that he wished that you know that they wouldn't have uh, uh when basically when you read these, uh, Acts the twenty sixth chapter, and uh, Paul was basically giving him the breakdown of the gospel. He had a nerve to use that to act as if you know King Agrippa had a, had a chance of salvation. That motherfucker ain't have no chance of salvation, man. Paul was just saying what he needed to say in the moment. Because the spirit was upon him. You know? He was given the, the, the testimony. And he was also using wisdom. He was being subtle. So he spoke a little flattery uh, 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 to King Agrippa. And, Crip, and Agrippa was almost uh, convinced. He's like, you almost persuaded me to, 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 to be a, a, a Christian. But we know it wasn't in him to to follow the Lord, because he he was he was a degenerate man. So anyway, let me go from there, because you know the Lord had that devil had those devils over us at that time. Let's go to our Romans the ninth chapter, because that's how the Lord made them. You know that's part of the nature of Esau. He's the wicked. You know he he can't do any any righteousness because it's not in him. Uh, Romans uh, nine. And 21. And it says, Have not the powder power over the clay of the same lump to make one vessel unto honor and another unto dishonor? And, you know, Jacob, he was the, the, the vessel of honor. You know, he was a plain man. Esau was, he's the vessel uh, to dishonor, man. He's, he's the seed of, of the wicked. All right, he's a fornicator, a profane person. It tells you that in uh, Hebrews 12 uh, chapter. When you look up that word profane in the Greek, the word there is uh, babelos. Usually it, it means, um, when, when you go back to the Greek, it, it's uh, profanus, which means outside the temple. But in that context, the, the Greek word is uh, babelos. And it basically means to be unhallowed, ungodly, wicked. So these are, these are a seed of un, ungodly, wicked men. All right, because their forefather Esau is, is, is a wicked, he, he was the wicked. Now, let's look up that word dishonor. <clears throat> and the Greek word is uh, atimaya, and it says dishonor, ignominy, disgrace. So they're basically they're they're a disgrace, man. And based off of the history of of the Herodians, man, they they are the, the disgrace. But it, their, their their father Herod the Great, he was he was a damn devil. You know, he had all those wives and all those children, but he had a a, a multitude of ungodly children, because they were just as ungodly as he was. You know, he wanted to be in position of being king over Judea. He wanted all the praise. And the Mosai ended up, uh, I forget which Herod that was, one of his sons, the Mosai had to put his ass to death because he thought he was on the level of a god and, you know, he had an oration and them people was, uh, you know, saying, oh, this is the voice of a god and the Mosai immediately struck his ass, man, had him uh, rot from the inside out, put his ass to death, you know, so they was all a bunch of demons, man. All right, and down here in the Strong's definition, it says dishonored. Uh, disgrace, dishonor, reproach, shame, vile. All right, and yeah, they are vile, man. It, it was at Job the thirtieth chapter. It, it says that they're um they were they were children of fools, base men. They were viler than the earth. That's describing Esau, man. And them same people, they're in power to this very day, and you wonder why the world is in the direction that it's in. You know, full of uh, fornication, 
you know, degeneracy, debauchery, licentiousness, whatever you want to uh, say, man. As it, uh, uh, was that Sirach, the 10th chapter, as, uh, um, as the ruler of the city is, so are the people, man. You know? So, there it is, man. So, obviously, these were clearly Edomites. Clearly, just based off of their uh, nature and their behavior alone. All right, these these were clearly Edomites. These were not Israelites. Even though you got wicked Israelites among us, you got Israelite devils, but these they, these devils right here, they were clearly Edomites, man. They they, they clearly did what Edomites would, would would do. All right. So anyway, you know, I hope this uh, lesson was edifying, and I'm a I'm gonna leave a link, you know, to this uh, in the description box. This is uh, from Early Church, Early Church History. So I'll leave a link to that in the description box. So Lord willing, you brothers and you sisters were edified. Let me give all praise, glory, and honor to Yahweh Shai. And to the next lesson, Shalom.